So what I like to do is, um, the ground is cold it is, and yeah. it's been raining, you know, so a lot of times what I do is I'll take some wood mm -hmm. and make like this insulation layer. Okay. And so the whole idea is it insulates the fire from mm -hmm. the ground. Well, that's how it would should light up pretty much. But it's not a bad idea. Have you ever started a fire with um, a fire steel? Yes. I was, I'm an Eagle Scout, so I oh, had plenty of uh, camping. Nice. <laughs> so you can show us how it's done. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while since I've uh, been in Scouts, but. Okay, so why don't, why don't we start by making um, some feather sticks here. that it's um first ed or what's it yeah first edge That's they made it for nice. the navy seals here actually Let's see if show the camera here this was made here no it's a, well it's made the navy, the navy seals do their cold weather training book right in Kodiak. so they made they requested first edge to make them a knife and you can here. get this on amazon I think they still have it on Amazon. There's a couple different models. This is the 50-50. 50-50, how much did it cost? Uh, it's an expensive knife. I think it was like at least $200. Wow. Yeah, but it's it's a heavy duty knife. <laughs> well, Uncle Sam's paying for it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Except you're not a Navy SEAL, you had to buy that one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but that's my survival knife. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and make some... I'm going to turn this off a second. So I brought a bunch of my toys here. Let me show you what I got. Kukri. Those are pretty nice. And then I've got my uh, Westerling Axe. Do you have one of those? I do not. I have a Who twenty dollar like Home Depot one. <laughs> I have a tomahawk, and I got my silky saw. I got my cold steel bushman <clears throat> knife, and this is a Enzo knife that I made, made, made in Sweden, I think. And then I got my case buoy knife. Nice. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. I got a little bit of everything here. And then finally, I got my Mora carving knife. Nice. Yeah, I saw online those are very uh, popular. Yeah, so I'm going to try making feather sticks with different knives and see which one works the best and just have a good time of it. Yeah. We'll try some different types of wood and stuff too. That works. So I think let's start with this axe. These are just barely long enough for feather stick, but mm -hmm. I think they'll do. Have you ever tried using cottonwood? No, I haven't. Me neither. Does that grow? Like, it sure looks like cottonwood to me. Yeah, yeah, it grows here. On the east coast, or is that like a west? Here. There's some right over here somewhere. We'll probably find some around. Yeah. Okay, I'll start with my Bushman Cold Steel. See how this works for making.
Wow, look at that. It curls really nice. I don't know if I got the grain just the way I like it, but look at that. This wood is really wet though. It is. Because I collected it last night and it hasn't been raining almost every day. Yeah. It's been pretty bad though. Well. The tricky part with making a feather stick is having them so they don't break off. These right here are quite brittle. Yeah. They're not really staying on. I don't know if this is all that ideal. And the plus there's a knot there in the middle. I'm not too impressed with that actually. It's probably because it's wet. Yeah. A lot of it has to do with the grain. Yeah. You know, if I reverse the wood. Now this one, look at that. That's nicer. Mm -hmm. Let me try a different knife here. This is my Mora knife. I wonder how that works in comparison. I think I can do a little bit finer with it, but that um, cold steel Bushman is not nothing to slouch about. It's pretty nice. Oh yeah, look at those. Yeah, there you go. Fine shavings. I don't know if we can ignite them or not, but uh, they're soaking wet. Mm -hmm. We could try. Okay, your turn. There's one feather stick. Why don't you make some? I'll be the cameraman. <laughs> Have you experimented with different angles, like angling it down versus angling the tip up? I have not. N not the wood, the, the blade. Oh, uh, the blade? Yeah. I no. think I think the answer is it just kind of depends, but I usually like to point the blade down just a Could little you? bit. Like that? Just a little bit, not, a, little not bit. a lot. Because it gives like a slicing effect. Oh, I gotcha. That I, I've, I personally have good luck with. Wood is not the best. But. It's not the best, is it? <laughs> it's really hard to work with. We should try some other types of wood. Do you have any red cedar? I didn't bring any red cedar now. Actually, I, I did. Did you? Let me look. I think I did. Yeah. Here's a nice piece of cedar. Yeah, it is. Doesn't Check that right. out. <laughs> yep, it is. Okay. Why do you go ahead and split that first with the axe and then uh, try making some feather sticks with that and see. Don't chop off your hand. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Now, here's what I like to do. So, I hold it here, 
and then I'll hold it down here and I'll bring it up with it. I gotcha. Okay, and then I'll go straight down like that. That way I can get it right in there. Let's try that. That log is not wanting to that stick. Was... Try that technique. Don't put your hand up there, put it down low, yeah. Okay. You don't want your fingers anywhere near that blade. And that way you can, you let go, you let go of it right as, you, as you're coming down. Okay. Yep. There you go, perfect. Sometimes it, it helps. <laughs> well, sometimes it helps if you get down on your knees too. Okay. Yeah, there you go. See that? Now, have you seen the other technique where they do it horizontally? No. Okay, so it's like this. So the other technique is you lay it down here and you go. Oh, okay. Like that, and then you can then you can twist it, twist it in, or you can just keep on going like that, and then you break it like gotcha. that. There's lots of videos on that technique. Okay. I don't use it very often, but it is. Yeah. I think if I was going to be teaching a brand new beginner, I would probably mm -hmm. make them use that technique because it's, it's a safer, you know, like if it I is, was yeah. teaching some kids. And that's the other reason why I'm not a big fan of hatchets and axes if you're trying to teach an, a bunch of people mm -hmm. because they're very dangerous they if, are, yeah. if you don't know what the heck you're doing. Whereas a saw, probably not going to cut yourself with a saw. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so try making some feather sticks with that and see how that okay. goes. And I also brought my uh, my fire stick. Oh yeah, that's working better. That's working better. Oh yeah. Well, that's what we're doing today. It's feather stick practice. Yes. We're not here to teach anybody how to do it. We're here to learn and experiment with different techniques and figure out what works and what doesn't work. Exactly. There's there's plenty of uh, videos out there on how to do it right. Mm -hmm. This video would be more like how to do it wrong. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just about having a good time. Yeah. It's not something I do every day. Probably a little easier to do with this. Smaller, you know? You know, I think it has pluses and minuses. Yeah. One thing is, when you have a heavy knife, you can actually use the weight of the knife as like a, like a momentum. Yes. Um, but you can't get as fine of curls as you can with a thinner exactly, blade. Exactly, yeah. So, I'm not sure which is the preferred. We're still experimenting. Can you do longer? It's one thing. Longer strokes. One thing that I wish that your uh, feather sticks were a little bit longer. See, see how mine <clears throat> I got you. Yeah. are a good six inches or so. Because when you throw that spark, it's really hard to be accurate with the spark. It is. It's total random and it flies everywhere and it can travel like a foot away. Mm -hmm. And so the longer they are, the better chances of you have of it hitting. I would try that. And um, the trick with that is um, straight grain. You okay. want a piece of wood that's straight grain. And so sometimes it's like the first cut you have to kind of like just, you know, you're basically reaving the testing wood. Testing it, yeah. Yeah, testing it. You're, you're, you're making a nice runway of parallel grain. There you go. That's, that's your best one yet. Yeah. That's nice. I don't think 
think you're close enough. Close enough. Let me, let me show you a technique that I like to do. Yeah, if you have to do it more than a dozen times, you're doing something wrong, you just need to stop. Okay, first of all, I like to lay these down. You can always move them up. Yeah, once they light. Once you, once you light them, I like to get them in there into a nice solid position. And I like to have the curls so they're facing, facing you. Okay. Like that. And then get in here. I don't know if you really have enough small stuff that's feather stick in there to really make this work, to be honest with you. Yeah, but good. yeah. Let's use my feather stick. Okay. Okay, so see how that is? How it's there's a mass right there? Yeah. It's just sopping wet. It's, this might might not work. Yeah, my wood is pretty wet. It's, this is the cotton wood. Man, that is just soaking wet. You want me to get one of the uh, wipes Yeah, if you want to get you that, that'd be good. That'll layer it up. Okay. I don't think these feather sticks are gonna work because I think they're too damp. It just it's been raining all week. You almost see the water off of it. There you go. I like one of these bad ones. Yeah. You just put the whole thing in there? Yeah. I put a tissue in there, so if oh. you like scrape the wax a little and get a piece of tissue, I'll move that after I get it lit. Yeah, you have to do it on that shiny side. There you go. Now put the put these vertical like this. There's another one. Those yeah. usually light pretty well. You Grab just that have other to... stick, please. The problem is, I so I put the tissue in there, and then put the paraffin wax over it. But you got to right. get a piece of that tissue like showing, you know, for the spark to catch it. I, I think what's really critical is having super dry wood to start that with. That too, yeah. It. I mean, this is one of the hardest places to try to start a fire with how wet it is. Yeah, just because uh, it looks like we're gonna fire's gonna go out here if we don't pay attention. Okay, it's time to get serious. I'm gonna get some dry wood going. Right. Here, put these pieces on there as I cut them. You may have to break them in half or whatever. suffocate it here. <laughs> right. Well, if you do the teepee, it won't suffocate. Oh yeah, this is gonna be great. This is gonna be awesome. This right here is a K-Bar Kukri. But the nice thing is, see when you come down here it has like a forward angle and that makes it 
give it, it gives a kind of a slicing effect a little bit. Okay. And it's heavier on the front. Anyways, you can really cut wood pretty good. And you can use it for splitting too. Mm -hmm. But let me show you. Once you run the camera so you can point it at me there and I'll show you. And you can just twist the lens to zoom it in if you want. But like for chopping it would. So this thing works pretty good. See that? And this is a piece of pallet wood. It goes in a good half an inch. So if you compare that to like an axe. Now the axe is designed for it, so the axe is going to be better. But the kukri is more versatile because you can use it as a machete. So, as you can see, this is a good substitute. It's, it's acceptable. If you're going to go on a camping trip, you only need to bring one of these. You don't have to bring both of them. Because they do uh, overlap quite a bit. And also, you can also baton wood with this. So you put that on there. You know, I don't really have a, a good a good club there, but and then for clearing brush and stuff, uh, pruning trails and stuff. So it's really it's a favorite of mine. I like the axe too. So here's what I really like about uh, this Bushman knife. So I just made, this, I just carved this, you know, out of pine. Put a rubber stopper on there, and I can take this and stick that on there. Okay. And so you can use this as a machete. You know, or if you want to throw it as a spear, but yeah, that'll work good. Stays on there pretty good. Yeah. You know, and in a last resort, you could defend yourself from a bear. I think. Absolutely. You'd probably still get bit, but yeah. <laughs> you got. <laughs> I'd rather have this against a bear than than just this. that. Yeah. At least, at least you got a fighting chance. And then um, I, I wrap this with the same stuff. It works really good. I like it. So next year when I go um, hunting, I'm going to use this setup. I'll have this with me. And I'll use this for field dressing the deer. And then I've got this for hiking. It's pretty versatile. Yeah. Yeah, I, I fish with these all the time. Even in the summer, sometimes my hands get cold here in Alaska. Yeah, especially. So I'm just gonna. Make it about that long.
should work. It's smoked out here. So I like my pot so much that I need another one. So first thing I did was I ground the bottom of that so it's nice and smooth mm -hmm. and I seasoned it. And then this right here is from a squeegee oh, okay. I got at the hardware store. I just cut it off and I cut off the handle and drilled two holes and just bolted that on. And then, so right now I'm carving this uh, the stick to be able to fit in here. I need to go down a little bit more. And then I and then I cut the end like that so that I can lift the lid. There you go. Okay. Yeah. So I really like that, how that works. This should work pretty good now. Maybe just a little bit more here. There you go. Try that. There we go. So now I can put that on the fire and I can take the lid off with it without having to use gloves. Nice. That makes a good fire poker, so don't burn this. <laughs> Last time I went camping, my friends burnt my stick. And um, I made another one, and this one lady said, don't burn the old stick or you will experience his wrath. <laughs> it's like, oh, thanks. That's a nice pot. Yeah. I've got a smaller version of it too. There we go. You know, a lot of people, they um, get tripods and they support the pots and everything. Yeah, just throw it in the pot. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it personally. I mean, it's, it's more work. Honestly. It's fun to do all the bushcrafting stuff and, and carpentry, but just put it in the fire. It, the less stuff you gotta bring, and you know, know. Like, <laughs> Just the, the more simple. you can multi, you know, use things. Exactly. I'm totally with you there, buddy. Keep it simple. Especially if you're like backpacking, you know, the stuff you gotta bring. Right. Yeah. Well. You know, th that's the thing that I really love about um, camping is being able to uh, figure out how to solve a problem with a minimal amount of gear. You know? Yeah. Yeah, you try to bring stuff you can use for multiple things. Yeah, you know? and learn to adapt. It's like if you don't have a certain piece of equipment that you want, make it. Yeah. You can, you can do a lot of things out of wood. You can carve things and you can get creative with other tools. So, but you to, it's nice to have a minimum, a bare minimum. Exactly. Knife, saw, axe can really go a long ways. 
I like that saw. It's a nice saw. Yeah, so do I. I yeah. have that cheaper one, you know, the I don't plastic think, one. I think if I was going to get it again, I probably wouldn't have got it quite as big. Maybe like an inch shorter. Yeah. Because I never really use the full length of it. I mean, who wants to cut an eight inch log? That is a lot of work. It's a lot of work. <laughs> you know, I'd rather cut two With four inch. With a hatchet, inch, maybe. Yeah. You know? I'd rather cut two four inch logs than an eight inch log. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Yeah, it was like, no messing around this time. I drove to the beach and brought my chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking chopped it all, loaded my bed up with wood. Don't delete that part. You didn't hear that part about the chainsaw. <laughs> Do we have any more wood? Right on the bed there, yeah. Okay. You could split it smaller. It might burn easier. I don't know. Well, I think I actually wanted to last last a little bit longer so this is good we're gonna be here a while get some coals going so that I can cook but um, I think I can start cutting up the veggies and stuff get that ready VUA. I think so. Um, they're, they're made in, uh, in Vietnam. They're uh, okay. hand, hand forged and they actually make them from old uh, vehicle leaf springs. Wow. And they're carbon steel hand forged and it's a beautiful knife. I bet. And they're not that expensive because they're you know forged from um, because leaf they're made, springs. They're made in Vietnam. Yeah. But they're freaking, these guys are like barefoot, you know, hand forging these knives. I see. But once you use the Japanese knife, it's hard to... Uh... <laughs> well, you know, so far, this knife seems to be versatile for just about anything I need it, need it to do. And it's shaped a lot like a, you know, a butcher knife, so... Yeah. No reason why it won't work. So I'm gonna... I'm gonna start using this knife as like my my primary knife, I think. Mm -hmm. And I want to try um, carving with it and see how far I can get. Now, just carving sticks and stuff yeah. like this, it works fine. But I'm curious how it'll work when I'm actually carving something artistic. I don't know. I still like my smaller knives for that. Mm -hmm. And I think actually, I'm going to use both of the pots, maybe do like a double batch. Probably. Do people have uh, campfires up there? Yeah, I've seen uh, a lot of people camp up there. There's like a perfect spot, like right across the lake. Uh, but they have fires? I've Are seen people have a fire there before, okay. yeah. You, ha you gotta scrounge for wood. But if, have you ever gone on the other side of the lake? Looked over the no. cliff over there? I haven't been to that lake oh, yet. Oh, you haven't been to that lake? No, I need to do that. You need to do that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you go up to that lake, and then on the other side of the lake, there's like a huge like drop off on the other end with the stream that goes down. Let's do that this summer. Yeah, this summer we'll do that. That's my favorite hike. My 
fingers get so cold these days. I got circulation issues, I think. It's a little chilly. Yeah. It is. It, especially since the sun just came up. It's probably like, what, 40 degrees? Yeah, let's see. Yeah, 39. 39. You have a thermometer? That's my phone. Oh. Just the weather. I wish the phones had a thermometer built into them. Yeah. I don't know why they don't. Is there any of this stuff you don't like? Oh, I like everything. Okay. Oh, you know. I figured that you would. I love to cook. Me too. Especially over a campfire. If I had time, I would do it every day. Yeah, it takes a lot of time. Yeah. You ever use this stuff? No, no. It's really good. I can't find it in town right now for some reason. Well, we'll cook that, and then I'll put the eggs on later. Where's my magic stick? There it is. Smoke is always guaranteed to come at you. Oh yeah. Doesn't matter where you put the chair. We would always uh, joke around in scouts and ask the new guy to go get a left-handed smoke shifter. <laughs> hey, I've got this idea I'm going to try as an experiment, and I have no idea if it'll work or not. What if you took a post and you drove it around right next to the fire, so it's like a, like a dummy, like a scarecrow? You know, would the smoke be attracted to this pole and yeah. keep it away from you? Think it would? Maybe. I don't know. I think having a low chair might be an advantage too. Because it I have might. a higher chair, so yeah. it's kinda like, you know, if you're in beer country being a slower person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like this. So this the is smoke will come towards me instead of for you because I'm higher up. Boy, it's cooking good. I think I'm gonna those two because one of them is a little hotter than the other, don't you think? Yeah, I think this one's probably hotter. Or, or just move this one out of the way. I think it's too hot or burning. Maybe that. Yeah, because that's just. hot. Still in a pretty hot spot. Well, we want to eat.
<laughs> fire's like going out. Fire's going out. I've got some emergency dry wood we can put on there. Okay. Need to. I'm making a mess. I remember once we went, I think it was like upstate New York once. Yeah. We were like on this campsite, no one else, like the only campground <laughs> there. It was way, it was like in the teens or like below zero, like at night. Right. My dad, <laughs> he got out of the tent, started his diesel up like in the middle of the night. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Put the heat on. <laughs> That's noisy. Yeah. Wake everybody up, huh? Yep. I'm just gonna go ahead and have it, cause I'm hungry. It's probably warm enough. Barely. Barely. If you want it warm, I'll leave it on longer. <laughs> it's delicious though. I need to put those eggs on there pretty soon, I think. You smell something burning? Ooh, that's hot. Yeah, it's probably getting hot, man. I'm just gonna take this off and let it coast a little bit. Because I think it's plenty hot. Yeah, you can listen to that. Oh, yeah. Got some smoked biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it tastes good, though. That one might be a little crispy. We'll see. Let's take a look at it. It's definitely not easy cooking oh. over a fire with kind of iron. <laughs> Now when you get smoke in your eyes. Oh yeah. That looks perfect. Mm. Mm. That looks good. This is really gonna dry it up. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna put the pan in here somewhere. Okay. Uh, right. I'm just gonna bring some embers over. Okay. I guess. I just need a level. Five. Yeah, I'll leave that there. Then. Le yeah, leave that there. You, there's more wood if you want to get put more wood on it. I think it's good. Yeah. Let me go ahead and add the the eggs. this again. Should I add more than two eggs? Why don't you put those on the fire? Make sure they're level. You don't want it too hot, like this right here is. Probably too hot. Yeah. I'll move that one. I think 
it's okay to have it back. Okay. Get that back. So don't grab it with your hands. Yeah, don't. <laughs> <laughs> I did that once with a hot coal when I was oh, a kid. Yeah. I picked it up. I thought it was like cool. Oh my god. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. I want to cook that nice and slow, anyways. Those pans are just so awesome. These are eight inch lodge skillets. Yeah, that's a good size, manageable. The, the lid is quite a bit more expensive than the pan itself, but- Is it really? It, it's it, crazy. it didn't come together? No, no, you buy them separate. But the, oh, way, yeah. the way I figured is the pan is worthless without the lid. So it's like $8 for the pan and then $20 for the lid, but who cares? Yeah. I mean, these and things- that'll last you a lifetime. Yeah. I love these pans. I use them at home, in the kitchen. That's like all I use at home is the cast iron. I know. I know. But this size is nice because it's not too heavy. You can actually yeah. take it camping. Yeah. And it's compact. I think you give that another five minutes and we'll be ready for breakfast. What time is it? <laughs> <laughs> so. This is actually my preference over the Dutch ovens. The Dutch ovens, you know, for baking, obviously. Yeah. If you got a bake thing, but for something like this, where you're just making a skillet type of lunch or breakfast, mm -hmm. yep. meat and potatoes kind of thing, this works fantastic. Okay, we need that wind again. Yeah, baking over the fire, that's, that's, that's a challenge. Yeah. His and hers. <laughs> <laughs>
Yummy nom nom. Mm -hmm. It's my favorite breakfast. Just a egg scramble. Mm -hmm. Sausage. I think the sun is going to be hitting us here pretty soon. Yeah. Maybe. 